I think the most masculine men have the courage to love. Men who are insecure, who are hollow in their masculinity, want to be worshipped. You don't need to become less to have a healthy relationship with a woman. Powerful women want to have powerful men. You cannot be humble if you do not know your power. If you do not know your power, you're not humble, you're just afraid. When we talk about a lot of the messages you put out there is about love and, yeah. you know, and some people just don't think these, these words mix. So I want it, I would love to hear it. I actually do focus on masculinity and I focus deeply on love. I think the most masculine men have the courage to love. And I think men who are insecure, who are hollow in their masculinity, want to be worshipped. But men who are rich and mature in their manhood know the power of loving. It's different than wanting to be loved. It's actually having the courage to love. But I also feel that masculinity has lost its appeal. And so you end up in this dichotomy of, they talk about toxic masculinity, but then the other spectrum seems to be feminine masculinity. And there seems to be no healthy masculinity. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, um, no, actually, I think that it's a good thing when men discover their strength and their courage, their nobility, their integrity. And I think it's a misread when people think women do not want men who are truly masculine. You don't need to become less to have a healthy relationship with a woman. Powerful women want to have powerful men. They need powerful men. And you don't need a wife who's powerless to be masculine. I think men who are afraid of their masculinity, who are uncertain of their masculinity, want weak women. Kim is powerful in her own right. I do not tell Kim what to do. I'm afraid to tell Kim what to do. And she wouldn't do what I told her to do. And I married someone like that because she has her own mind. She has opinions, she has perspective. Uh, we, we fight. I just would never want someone who was compliant. I mean, I, I want someone who's kind. And I want someone who respects me as a, as a human being in the same way I would respect her. But I want someone who has their own energy and their own force of nature. And that to me is more exciting. But yeah, I write books that tries to awaken the heroic inside of men. I do write books that tries to convince men that the most courageous thing in the world is to love. That being kind is the most powerful force for a man. Look, you can't be humble if you're insecure. I value humility as one of the highest virtues. You cannot be humble if you do not know your power. If you do not know your power, you're not humble, you're just afraid. You're not humble, you're just compliant. The only person that can be truly humble is the person that knows their strength and knows their power, then chooses it to serve, chooses to empower, not overpower. I believe kindness is one of the highest values that I know that I have in my life. When you have strength and you're kind, that's where it perplexes the world. I, you know, one day I, I, I was, I think, walking Bogota. I had my hoodie up. I had a pretty long beard, thick at that time. And I said, Aaron, because I always, I always call Aaron in the middle of the night when I'm walking the streets. Usually it's like, I'm lost. I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Ping me. Where I'm, where I'm I like, am. I'm in LA. I don't know where you no, are either. No. I said, Aaron, I just had this epiphany. I think I know why I've never been mugged. <laughs> when I walk the most dangerous streets in the world. And he goes, why, Dad? And I said, because I look like the mugger. <laughs> 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 and I have stared at people who were bearing weapons and arms who have cut people's throats with their switchblades. And I've said face to face, toe to toe. And I've never in my mind doubted that I was a dangerous person. And I am also the safest person. When you're not dangerous, you're not really safe. You're just weak. When you have power and force and strength, and then you choose to use that power and force and strength to be meek and kind and compassionate, to me, that's what it means to be masculine. And it means so much more as well. And you're like, it's so true. It's so powerful. We uh, interviewed, it might have been some of those clips you'd seen, mm -hmm. uh, um, Master Sha Hong Yi. And he talks about this concept of the demon hand and Buddha heart. The kindness with strength and power is completely different. I see a few of the people that you've had on stage mm -hmm. and I can see the people that you pick to 
to speak have that but lewis is one of those guys you mm -hmm. know and it, it is it means so much more when they could take over the world without being kind if they really wanted to but because they do it in <laughs> kindness it's a completely different thing mm -hmm. it means so much more yeah it's powerful and then we speak about the arena and what you guys are doing giving voice to those people i mean where did it all come from like what was the birth of that you know initially it came from this idea that i was really struggling with my ability to communicate it was about 10 years ago and I, I I'd moved to New York and I was coming back and I was just trying to figure out how to become more like him in, on the communication side. And I begged him to please just write down like a how to communicate to people. And he comes back with this, just this very feng shui, Japanese inspired five elements of communication. And I was like, dog, give me something real. <laughs> um, and he's like, no, no, like, trust me, write these five elements down and then bring your friends to the house and I'll walk everyone through it. And so he did it for, I want to say four to six weeks. And by the fire, end, wind, fire, water, wind, water, water, earth. Yeah. <laughs> and, and kind of connects this to the different frequencies within ourselves and how to communicate with passion and with fire and to, with these aha moments with wind and, and to how to make things practical, but also emotional and passionate. And so the 10 years later, we're in the middle of COVID and I go, Hey man, what about, uh, filming for two days on this five elements of communication. He was like, no, no one wants that. And I was like, no, no, trust me, trust me. Let's do, <laughs> let's do like a masterclass and film it and just give me two days. Like you could do it in four hours, but give me two days, we'll film it, we'll record it, release it to the world, see how that goes. So we released this thing called the Art of Communication. And from there, we did this like bonus package of like these weeks of Zoom calls where we kind of jumped on with people and asked questions and gave them the space to ask questions. And the last uh, week I was a little cruel and I was like, what if we pull clips of all these communicators and call it the arena? And we get you to be like the Simon Cowell judge <laughs> and just rip them apart the way that you rip me apart. <laughs> Because he's very kind and 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 generous with with his critique, but if you you know you get into it, he's a little harder on some people. And it was the most good anxiety like ridden experience. People were cringing on Zoom. I have so many screenshots of people just like melting, like grown men, you know, just I can falling. Imagine. Yeah. yeah, and it was just so fun. And from there we were kind of left with this thing of going, okay, well, we did this moment. Like we don't, we're not going to keep doing these Zooms. And a year later we were together and we're like, how do we build on the community aspect of what we're doing? But why teach communication? I think even more than communication, I think the, the real subversive thing that we're doing is, <laughs> that he's doing is teaching people how to think. Yes, that's the secret. It's the, the, the triangle that we use is communication, leadership, character, you know, mastery. And then in the space in between, it's big ideas. But the conversation I've had with Aaron and because he says, dad, help people speak better. And I would say, I can't help that person speak better unless we help them think better. But they don't know that what's limiting their communication is actually their limited thinking. So he said, all right, maybe we can create this space. And what we're really going to do is help people elevate how they think. If I said, I'm going to help you elevate the way you think, you might be too pragmatic, go, no, but I need to learn this how to speak or how to lead. But I'm going, you can't learn how to lead at a higher level if you don't learn how to think at a higher level. You cannot learn how to communicate at a higher level if you don't learn how to think at a higher level. So the universe of that, of this space is we want to elevate the way people think. And that's to me, the, the real power of the arena. And then when you think at a higher level, suddenly you begin to communicate better. Suddenly you begin to lead better. And also when you think at a higher level, suddenly you, suddenly you become a better human being because you realize I keep making the same stupid choice over and over again. And I, maybe I need to think at a higher level. And the, the mind shifts in this book are so simple. And in fact, they're so simple that the moment you see them, you'll think, of course, why didn't I think of that? The problem is that people don't think of that. And that the most profound things in life are actually incredibly simple. They're not simplistic, but they elevate the way you think and then they remove the ceilings that have limited your life. Like there's like one of the chapters is you are your own ceiling. I mean, once you see it, it becomes so clear. But when you can't see it, you just can't see it. And most of the people I coach, their ceilings are completely constructed by their own choices. And yet, so oftentimes they think it's because of some external environment or circumstance. And, and that to me is like one of the frustrations when I think, oh my goodness, this person is just one degree off from an extraordinary life. If I could just convince them to shift that one degree. So it is about thinking.